Hello everyone, so in this particular video we are going to do one end to end Azure data factory project and this is the data migration project. Okay, so we have a business requirement. First we will try to understand the agenda. Based on that we will try to build the data pipeline. Everything we are going to see in the practical. Okay, if you are new in this particular channel, please do like, please do support and please do comment so that the more videos like this I will try to post it. Okay, so let us try to first understand what is the business requirement and what is the agenda. Okay, so we have a data that is available in an on-prem SQL server. Okay, and we want to migrate the data into Azure cloud. Okay, means we have a data that is available into our SQL server, on-prem SQL server and we have to move this data into the cloud space in Azure space. Okay, that is the first requirement. The second requirement is like the data available in a SQL server in a table format and we want to store this data into Azure storage account in a CSV format. That is the second requirement. Okay, the data that is available into the SQL server that is in table and we have to move this data into the cloud in a CSV format. Okay, that is the second requirement. Third requirement is like create a pipeline and schedule it so that the pipeline will run automatically. That is the third requirement. Okay, so if I will show you this is my the SQL server if I will show you we have a couple of the database right. So if I will show you any one of the table this is employee table. If I will execute, you will be able to see this employee table. Okay. Now what we have to do, we have to move this data into a cloud space. Okay. So how actually we can do for that we will try to create a pipeline. Okay. Now we are going to create one Azure data factory pipeline. Okay. So we will try to use a copy data activity, which will select a data from an on-prem SQL server and we that will try to move into the Azure storage. Okay. But this is not simple. Okay. For this we have to install the integration runtime. Okay. Uh, by default whatever the auto resolve integration runtime that will not work we have to do the self integrated run, self hosted integration runtime okay so how actually we can do that actually we are going to see okay once you will uh, connect with the integration runtime then only you will be able to connect with the on prem sql server and then you will be able to transfer the data into the cloud space okay so let's start with the project so let me open Okay, so this is a Azure account. I have Azure account. I have a storage account here. Okay, if I'll show you in in this particular storage account, I have a container. So let me try to create one container. Okay, I'll give the name as a output container and in this particular container, we will try to store our data. Okay, so I have created this output container and click on the create. Okay. Now you can see output container got created and here uh, as of now we don't have any file. Okay. Now let us try to open uh, our data factory studio. Okay. So this is the Azure data factory studio. Let me open this. Okay. Here only in the data factory we are going to create a pipeline. Okay. Now our data is available in a SQL server. Okay. And we have to move this data into a, our Azure. So that is the agenda and that is the requirement. Okay. How actually we can do? So our first step is like to create a integration runtime. Okay. So by default, what is the integration runtime? By default, it is a auto resolve integration runtime. So whenever you have a data that is available in a cloud, so for that you will use a auto resolve integration. But whenever you have to move data from on-prem SQL to the cloud, then you have to create your self hosted integration runtime. Okay. So I'll go to the manage. Okay, integration runtime. That is the first step. We have to create an integration runtime. As of now, auto resolve integration is there. That actually we use it for the to move our data which is available in a cloud. But it is available in a on-prem, right? So we will create a new integration runtime. Okay, we will click click on the Azure self-hosted. Click on the continue. Okay, click on the self-hosted. Click on the continue. You can see integration runtime one. Okay. Click on the create. Okay, it is giving me the key, and, and we can use this key for the connecting. Okay, and this is the manual setup so, and the express setup. We are going to do a manual setup, so I'll click on the download and install the integration runtime. So I'll click on that. Click on the download. Okay, and uh, we are going to click on this into anyone. Okay, download. Okay, once it will be downloaded, we will try to install it. Okay, okay, now if you will see this integration runtime got installed, so what we will do, we will try to install it. I will double click, 
okay you can see preparing installation is in progress click on the next 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 install now you can see it is finished now so we'll click on the finish okay now here only we have to pass the key okay so i'll go to my data factory okay so here we have a key right so i'll click there okay and i will go to the integration runtime we have installed that okay and you can see this is the tick mark right and the proxy proxy generally whenever you have another client who is using any other server so in that case we do but as of now for the project perspective i am not setting up okay and i will click on the register and after that we will click on the finish you can see it is initializing the integration runtime once it will be completed you will be able to see your integration time will be running okay so let us wait it to be completed you can see integration runtime okay launch configure manager okay we'll click on this okay it is connected to the cloud services it is showing now what we will do we'll try to refresh it you can see it is running now now our integration runtime is set up now okay now what we will do we will try to create a pipeline which will be able to transfer data from a sql server to our uh, blob storage right so for that we will create a pipeline click on this pipeline we, I, I will go to this uh, author click on the pipeline click on the new pipeline move and transform we will click on the copy data so drag the copy data once you will click on this copy data right in the bottom you can see we have a couple of the option once you will click on the source it is first saying like to create a data set so we have to create a data set okay i'll click on the new what is our data set uh, what is our source source is a sql server right so we will search for the sql server this is the sql server my source is sql server so i'll click on that for that we have to create a link service so that we can connect with the sql server so i click on the new okay and the integration runtime right so we have to use over the new integration runtime which we have created okay this is the integration runtime we are using okay and the server name we have to give so what is the server name that actually we have to pass it this is the server name so i'll use the server name i'll pass the server name and i'll pass the db name db name is employee db and after that you have to pass the username and the password and after that let's see whether it is connecting or not you can see connection is successful we are able to connect with our the on prem sql server click on the create okay now you will be able to see the table okay so we have a couple of the table that is available in a sql server like the employee table we have a department table we have ju i just have created that so let us try to move that so i'll click on this uh, employee one table okay and i will click on the okay okay now this particular uh, table uh, we will try to move into the our blob storage okay if you want to preview data click on the preview data you can see this is the table we have okay now what we will do we will try to move this data into the so, uh, sync location target location so i'll click on this sync i'll create a uh, sync location where actually i want to store i want to store into the blob storage so i will select that blob storage i want to store into the csv format so i'll click that continue a link service we will create a new link service okay and here you have to pass your the subscription and all your storage account so this is my storage account so that is the thing i am passing and i'll, I'll click on the create okay and after that we will select the folder this is the output folder i'll click there okay and i'll click on the okay okay now after that what we have to do we have to click on this publish all no error click on the publish once the publish will complete we will try to trigger it okay so generally what actually you will do uh, you will try to 
add a trigger okay like a manually when actually you have to run you have to run on a weekly basis monthly basis so for that what you have to do if you will click on the trigger now it will be triggered now only okay or you you can schedule it so let us try to trigger now and then we will try to schedule it so i'll click on the trigger now click on the okay okay you can see it is run is succeed okay if i'll go to the monitor and i'll click on the refresh you will see right this pipeline is succeed now now what we will do we will go to the storage account okay so this is the storage account i will go to the container in the container the file should be there you can see output container and you can see this is the file that is available in a txt format so let me click here and if i go to the edit you can see this is the particular file which i have okay so previously i was having a data that is available into the uh, on prem okay if i'll show you i'll show you this is my sql server this is the employee data okay if i'll show you select star from employee okay and this is the data which actually i transfer into the my cloud space okay now coming to the pipeline scheduling okay so we have seen like how actually we can trigger manually but whenever you have to schedule it right so what you will do click on the add trigger click on the new edit click on the trigger click on the new okay here you can schedule it okay when actually you want to schedule like every 15 minutes or every Uh, hour every day every week every month okay whenever you have to schedule it so for that you have to click like if i schedule every week okay on which particular timing that actually you have to pass if i select every hour so every hour it will be schedule every day it will be schedule at what time you have to mention okay and if you click means that this pipeline will be set up so this is how we do a setup okay i hope you got it now so as of now in the data pipeline right in the data pipeline whatever the data set i have created in this data set what actually i have done the table name okay whatever the table name i have selected that i have selected manually okay but uh, when we do in a production right this also we use a uh, this also we try to pass through a parameter so that from a parameter this particular table will be selected okay on run time only it will run okay if i select employee 1 means employee 1 data will be copy if i select any other table then that particular table will be copy so this is how actually we work i hope you got it yeah that's it in this video thank you.